Thank you. Sam Fieldman, Acton, Massachusetts. Uh, there were several things I wanted to... Could you spell your last name? I uh, like the two words, field and man, F-I-E-L-D and man. Okay. Uh, there are a few things I wanted to say, but before I do, I just wanted to point out an oversight made by the commission. There were four uh, subcommittees that you guys had voted on uh, last time. Uh, in earlier today, the fourth one was listed as drafting, but when you actually voted on it last one, last time the fourth one was action, and that's in that's consistent. Well, thank with, you. Do you have any testimony about the uh, substance? I do. Uh, right. I would just, but I would also like uh, to, that that is substantive, uh, with all due respect, because it's important that the commission do the appropriate finding of fact in order to meet its sure. obligations under the uh, section. So we had a discussion about that. Go ahead and, and testify, uh, other than the procedure. Uh, okay. I mean, I. I'm the uh, national counsel for an organization called Wolfpac, mm -hmm. which seeks to overturn Citizens United. We also helped out uh, with, uh, with people that were not money on, uh, on Proposition 2. Um, and, we have, uh, and, and we're seeking to use the Article 5 convention process to over, uh, overturn Citizens United. Um, uh, and last time, we talked about uh, presenting and recommending some witnesses uh, to talk to that subcommittee subcommission on the action items uh, so that we could so that you could properly understand the legal and political facts that you need to find in order to uh, meet your mandate under uh, section 4 part a subsection 5 to make recommendations for actions to be taken by Congress the general court of Massachusetts the governor the secretary of the Commonwealth the Attorney General and other public officials bodies and citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, to further promotion, proposals, and ratification of the recommended uh, constitutional amendment or amendments. Uh, without an appropriate finding of fact, uh, it would be very difficult for the, uh, if not impossible, for the commission to uh, meet that mandate in its report. And so I would uh, request uh, so that I can help, uh, and I'd be happy to help with the research of submitted information to the commission before uh, about that, uh, which I submitted last time. It's, you can read it at wolf pack.com slash MA review, which I gave the commission at the last hearing. Um, and I'd, I'd like to request that the commission uh, appoint members to that subcommittee so you can do the appropriate finding of fact. That's true. I mean, we will do that. And just as a, as a point of clarification, the subcommittees or the committees that we uh, designated today are not necessarily exhaustive and the commission reserves the right to appoint um, any necessary subcommittees uh, at any point in the future and to constitute those committees with appropriate members as they, uh, that becomes um, possible and necessary. So uh, that was not, that this was meant to be a start and not um, a complete list of all the committees that will ultimately be part of this commission. Sure, and Wolfpack is, uh, is also probably going to be holding an information session for uh, state legislatures that has not been set in stone yet, uh, but we would like to invite um, all the members of the commission and especially uh, any subcommission that's meant to deal with the procedure uh, to listen to that. And uh, when that's set in stone, we'll, uh, we'll communicate that to all the members of the commission. Thank you. At the same time, we have more than a quorum. We have a quorum of Certainly, we, we would not take questions from commission members there. Any questions from commission members would have to wait till the next uh, public meeting. So we, you know, a quorum of this committee could meet at any time to listen, as long as we didn't yeah. speak with one another. We, we would ensure this would be something that we would do for legislators, but we would also invite. Uh, commission members there, and we would ensure not to take any questions from commission members specifically to make sure that we're in compliance with the open meeting law. Thank you very much. Thank you. And yes. My name is uh, Greg Blonder from uh, Brookline, Massachusetts. Could you spell your last name? Sure, it's my, like my hair is Blonder, B-L-O-N-D-R, a little I have. Um, uh, I'm also a professor at Boston University as well as the executive director of an organization called WeAmen.us, which is working on crowdsourcing a uh, new bill of rights for America. Uh, we believe that 
trying to push single amendments like this through, especially ones that are not uh, acute in their uh, critical in their uh, uh, impact, is unlikely to happen. And I want to explain why and talk about what the committee might work on in terms of tactics, because we should not write the amendment to understand the tactics that we're going to use to get it approved. Um, there have been over 11,000 amendments uh, proposed in Congress since the founding of this country. 33, 33 only have been uh, sent out for ratification. Um, in addition to that, uh, uh, only one quarter of the states and one quarter of the uh, senators are needed to block or veto an uh, amendment for making it to the states. Those are very high odds. In order to get them passed, either one of two things happen. Either the amendment is uh, critical, the Civil War, led to the 13th, 14th, and 15th, 18-year-old uh, voted, came out of the uh, Vietnam War, and so on. Or, in most cases, it's due to a compromise. The Constitution itself is a series of messy compromises, everything from slavery um, to having a Senate as well as a House, and so on. Messy compromises. The Amendments that we've seen so far are unfortunately, and I say this because I'm very passionate about campaign finance reform, unfortunately extremely unlikely to pass uh, the requisite three quarters of the states. And I'll explain why. Um, there are three things that are going to make it difficult for the passion in this room to result in a national amendment. Uh, for, first of all, there is no call to action. There is no civil war. This is, this is a disease that's rotting away America, but no one day is anyone sick. And for that reason, it's very hard to get people out to the polls in every state. Um, it just simply is not has the tenor of the other amendments which have uh, passed. Uh, second of all, um, when you look at um, the amendments themselves, they're written in such a way that the, uh, and we've heard some discussion about this before, about the amendments. If they talk about things will be or even shall be, it's still up to Congress and the courts to actually implement it. And look at the sorry situation in Congress. Congress for the last 10 years has not passed a regulation requiring the SEC to require companies to report how much money they spend on political campaigns. Something that simple. You cannot rely on them to do it on this particular issue. This particular issue is not getting the traction that's required in order for this to become um, an amendment that's going to pass by all the state, well, by three quarters of the states and pass through Congress. What's needed, I believe, is a more pra and also the other thing, the third thing is, oh, sorry, I meant three, forgot, uh, is that despite the fact that polls show really serious interest in campaign finance reform, depending on who asked the question, 60 to 8 percent of America has some interest in campaign finance reform. The reality is, is that it doesn't translate to passionate polls. And I've run a lot of companies, I've marketed a lot of products. You can go out and ask people if they want to buy something, and they say yes, but when they go to the stores, they don't actually purchase it. When we look at um, things like Google search terms, um, the excitement around videos on this topic versus other topics that could be constitutional amendments, the, the actual excitement is low. And this has been discussed by other political scientists and other people in the past. And so those three reasons I'm worried that if we go about this directly trying to make a hard-edged amendment, which has a very strong, we're going to find it to fail. And this will be a child's crusade, one that's noble, but it'll be a child's crusade. Instead, I think we need to ask ourselves, what kind of amendment would be passed by three quarters of the states? And this is going to require giving away some things in order to get something of higher value. And in this small amount of time, I can't discuss the kind of trade-offs one might see. But I believe we could create an amendment which gets most of the value that we want on this subject and related speech subjects while giving away things that other people want. For example, corporations being people and other issues. We're going to have to compromise to get this one done. That's just my opinion based on studying the surveys and looking out into the past. That, uh, And I don't want this to be a failure. I don't want this just to be an activity that people feel good about, but at the end of the day, cannot get passed. So uh, we should think about the tactics. We could ask at a state-by-state, fine-grained level, what it will take to get passed. And let me remind you that, that so many people benefit from these campaign finance uh, donations from large corporations. Some states are owned by large corporations, and there are serious free speech issues that associations worry about 
in the amendments that are currently being passed that I think it's going to be difficult to get the three quarters approval with any of the amendments that I've seen. So that's, that's my one plea is that we need to really rethink it as going to war and asking what does it take to win the battle. That's so we'd be interested in your... Thank you. Thank you very much. We'd be interested in, in your further... I'd be glad to talk to one of the subcommittees or whatever. Yeah, there's more time. Thank you. And so B-O-O-N-D-E-R. Yes, it, from Boston University. Boston University. Thank you very much. Do we have someone else who would like to testify? I don't see anyone. I don't see any hands up. Okay, so uh, all, all, we have about 25 people here, but all the people who would want to testify have testified. Um, so at this point, I think we need to look at scheduling our next uh, meeting, and, and if we can schedule a meeting after that, and if we can schedule two or three meetings, that's great, but I guess we need to start with, with the first meeting. Uh, and do we, uh, Bill or C Custis, do you have, a, do you have a, a thought on when we should have our next meeting and perhaps where, well, what city um, or town? What Bill and I have been hoping is that um, now that the committees, at least these initial committees have been constituted, to give the committees some time to at least start their work and uh, perhaps meet, but at the very least uh, start thinking about the kinds of questions they might have, gathering some information, et cetera, uh, and um, give them some time to do that so that at our next full commission meeting we can have reports from these committees. Um, so we um, had a date in mind for a follow-up meeting, but we were thinking sometime in at the earliest, um, mid-July, and um, also putting together a fuller schedule of meetings um, beyond that for the full commission so that they can be scheduled in advance that I know, uh, Bill had been uh, working on and, and we're going to propose some regular meeting times for the late summer and going into the fall. Okay, so mid-July, um, <coughs> So what do we think, Kevin, about uh, three or four weeks from today? Three or four weeks from today? Okay. Yeah, I don't have my calendar in front of me. No, I do. So, yeah, three, yeah, three weeks from today would be the week of July 15th through the, tw through the 19th. Um, today we're meeting on a Monday. Our are Mondays especially good for people? Are Thursdays good for people? Or what? what what would be a good day for people? Thursday, the 18th, would be a good day for me. <laughs> it won't be a good day for me. I will be in Costa Rica on okay. vacation. So. Um, other people? What date was that again, Carmen? Uh, the, the, the Thursday, July 18th. We, we, Monday is, a, is the 15th. Uh, Tuesday is the 16th. Uh, Wednesday, the 17th. Thursday the 18th, Friday the 19th. What? Uh, so who uh, who has a, so we have anyone else have a problem with uh, with the 18th? Uh, you know we have at least one. Joyce has a Sanchez has a problem with the 18th. Anyone else have a problem with that? 